Welcome back to the channel, or if it's your first time, my name is Wes, and I'm the host of Thinking Critical, a channel predominantly dedicated to comic book YouTube, although we do dabble in the pop culture stuff every once in a while. Today, I'm going to go over my five tips for comic book YouTubers, and this is not completely specific to comic book YouTube. This is more like YouTube tips, but being a comic book YouTuber, I'm going to use that as the baseline of what I'm talking about. If you have a small channel, a medium-sized channel, Maybe you don't have a channel and you're thinking about getting into it, or maybe you're just a fan of the channel and you wonder why I do some of the stuff that I do. I think you're going to find a lot of this information pretty enlightening. Now, my first tip, and this is the most important one, and it's not even close, is you have to know who your audience is. And when I say who your audience is, you need to know who you're actually trying to speak to. Because as a comic book YouTuber, if you try to talk to everybody, if you want to speak to collectors if you want to speak to readers you want to speak to normies that really are into comics but are somewhat interested in the hobby itself if you want to talk to speculators if you want to talk to the most well-read batman reader in the world and you try to speak to them all at the exact same time no one will ever hear you because you're going to have to default to the least common denominator and all that stuff and you're going to be very generic and boring and you're not going to make a lot of very good points so you need to know exactly who you want to speak to, because when you talk about comic books or really anything in YouTube, yes, you have comic book YouTube, and then you have subcategories underneath that. Me personally, once I figured out that I wasn't trying to speak to anyone in particular with my channel at the beginning, and that wasn't going to get me anywhere, and I was like, I need to be a little bit more dialed into what I want to talk about and who I'm speaking to, I took a notepad, and I wrote down exactly who the person I'm trying to talk to. And it was very detailed, and I'm not going to go into all the details here. And for me personally, that was a turning point in my channel. My content got much more direct, much more focused, and I was able to get my points across very directly because I knew who I wanted to actually speak to. Does that mean, because I'm trying to speak to one almost very specific person, that other people won't hear what I have to say? Well, of course not. There are going to be other people that don't really exemplify the, the people that I'm trying to speak to directly but still hear me and are interested in my takes of comic books, news, opinions, and all that kind of stuff. So once you actually have it dialed in who you want to speak to, that is going to inform basically the rest of your channel, how you're going to present your content, when you're going to release it, what topics you're actually going to cover that the people you're trying to speak to actually want to hear about. Otherwise, you're just going to be doing a spray and pray uh, strategy where you're just putting stuff out there that you think might be interesting, or maybe it's just interesting to you in the hopes that maybe somebody will find your channel. I firmly believe in the bottom of my heart on YouTube, if you try to speak to everyone, no one, for the most part, will ever hear what you have to say because it won't be interesting. That's my first big tip. My second tip is you need to make your videos clickable. A lot of comic book YouTubers will notice that they'll develop a really nice, healthy audience on their channel, and basically they'll stop growing. Because yes, the audience that you do have, the people that are subscribed and like your content are coming back daily and they're coming back for the content that you create, but nobody else out there is discovering it because your stuff isn't clickable. There's three main ways to do this, to make your videos more accessible to new viewers so you can get more subscribers and grow your audience. The first one is your thumbnail. The second one is the title. The third one is the description. Those are the three main things that go into the clickability of your actual videos on YouTube when you're trying to speak to people that haven't discovered your actual channel yet. When it comes to thumbnails, this is absolutely the most important one. If you go into your YouTube analytics, you'll probably notice, and I certainly have on my channel, that the vast majority of the viewers on your channel are actually using mobile devices rather than like a computer or a desktop or something like that, or a laptop, you know what I'm saying, or, or even their TV. I do watch YouTube on, on television, but most people don't actually do that. So your thumbnails have to stand out, they have to be vibrant, but they also have to be discernible people need to understand what you're trying to get across in a picture that it's about that big i know a lot of people like to make fun of me because of my thumbnails because i've got goofy faces on there whatever there's one person in this world that hates making thumbnails like that and that is me the reason i do it is because it's a tried and true method on youtube to get people to actually click on your channel a lot of people put lots of text on their thumbnails in comic book youtube that is a terrible idea. No one can read a single word of it because they're probably using a mobile device anyway. I personally won't use more than four words in the text on my thumbnail, and I prefer not to use text if I don't have to. I like to have an image that will create an emotional response to the video. Normally it's myself, but if it's like a well-known character or some type of reaction within a comic book or something like that, you can finagle around with these things. There's a lot of different kind of templates of thumbnails that you can create that are really effective. 
But that is absolutely the most important thing when it comes to the clickability of your video to potential new viewers for your channel. Number two is the title. Me personally, I try to never have the same words that are on my thumbnail in the title itself because you're basically just wasting an opportunity to further explain or entice somebody to actually come in and view your content. One other thing that I see in comic book YouTube a lot, a lot of people have shows like a weekly show or maybe two or three daily shows that happen at set times during the week. And the name of the video will be the name of the show. If you're Joe Rogan, that absolutely works. The Joe Rogan experience is gonna make people click and stuff like that. But if you're Joe Blow Schmuckatelli like yours truly, ain't nobody outside of your channel actually knows who you are. You need to be actually specific to what you're talking about or what you're gonna get to in the video and tell people what they could expect other than a title like Worst of the Week with Wes. It just, it just doesn't work for YouTube. You need to be specific and the thumbnail and the title need to work in concert with each other to basically tell a story inviting people to come in. The least important part of the clickability is the description itself. I see a ton of people don't fill out the description, or if they do fill out the description, it's like, support my Patreon. You're basically inviting people not to click on the video because you haven't even taken the time to explain to them even in more detail why they should come in and click on your video. And it's not the entire description. You don't need to fill it all out. It's 5,000 characters or whatever. It's just like the first 200. Basically, the first two lines of your description will show up for new viewers if they're deciding on your video whether or not they want to click it. So you should have a nice, concise thumbnail that's not cluttered, not too much text, that tells a story with a title that accentuates that in an actual description, if you want your video to be clickable. The third thing that we need to talk about is you need to understand how YouTube actually works. And I'm not a YouTube expert, but I have read a lot of books on it. A lot of people think you're fighting the algorithm in YouTube, right? You're always fighting the algorithm. The algorithm's changing all the time. You're actually fighting, apparently, in between 12 and 20 algorithms in YouTube that are all operating at the exact same time. And they all have one basic purpose in mind when it comes to YouTube. YouTube wants viewers to show up, click on a video, and then stay for multiple, multiple, multiple videos. That is what YouTube wants you to do as a content creator within their ecosystem. But if you want to grow and you want YouTube to actually promote your videos to new viewers, potential new viewers, you need to work on your retention rate. That's one of the things that was absolutely killing my channel in the very beginning. It's one of the reasons I started doing a lot of editing after a few years on the channel. I noticed editing a lot of the downtime and repetitive aspects of my video and just getting straight to the point and continuing to fire off information to the viewer rather than sitting around and making goofy faces absolutely improved my retention rate. Of course, the most important thing is the clickability of your videos themselves, but then you actually want to work on your retention rates. There's a lot of different things that you can do that. Also, getting people to watch multiple videos of yours in a row will absolutely entice YouTube to start promoting your channel out to more new viewers. That's one of the reasons at the end of my videos, I normally say, hey, I did another video that kind of relates to this one. You should watch this one now. That is very important. You need to understand what YouTube actually wants you to do. They want you to get people there, click on your video, and they want them to stay there. And it's up to the algorithms to determine who is actually doing that well and promote them more out than, than everybody else. Basically the haves and the have nots. It's not because YouTube hates you. It's because other creators are doing a better job of retaining their audience and actually getting them to binge more videos in a row than some other creators. That's why they're getting promoted. The number four thing I'm gonna talk about is engaging with your viewers. There was a time on my channel early on where I would answer every single comment on my channel individually, no matter what you said. And that was very effective. It certainly upped the engagement with videos on my channel. People enjoy talking to the creators or having a conversation about what you just talked about. Unfortunately, after a while, and my channel's not big, I don't want anyone to think that Wes thinks he's like king dingling of the comic book YouTubers, because that is not true. I'm just like a middling, marginally successful channel here. But once your channel gets to a certain point, you won't be able to do that, or at least I wasn't able to. But what I do to engage with the viewers of the channel, obviously, is I go through and I read every single comment on the channel. And once I read it, I give it a heart. Sometimes I will reply to those comments, but I don't normally have time. Not only do I have a bigger channel now, not only do I have more comments, but I also have two more children in the meantime that I need to dedicate a lot of time to as well. So I'm not able to respond to as many viewer comments as I would like, but I am able to read all of them. One of the big mistakes I see through YouTubers, not just in comic books, but basically everywhere, is they get in these really stupid fights where if someone comes onto your channel, 
They go into your comment section and then they they troll the crap out of you or they troll the other commenters on the video just to get a rise out of you. I used to engage in this. I used to go in there and argue with them and, you know, name calling and all that kind of stuff. After a while, I realized it is the biggest, dumbest waste of time in the history of YouTube itself. If somebody is going in there and they want to say you're stupid, whatever, heart the damn thing and move on. If somebody wants to go in there and say that you're this and a that and call you names or whatever, I just hide the user from the channel because I don't have time for that. Or if you have a really offensive troll that is just in there trolling people basically on a daily basis, they don't need to be in your comment section. Just remove them. There's no reason to get into the tit for tat stuff with the commenters on the channel. And let alone other YouTubers. I see like this, this a lot, like YouTube beef, where all of a sudden YouTubers just start slamming each other or whatever. I've seen people have made videos about me. I never respond to any of them. It's an enormous waste of my time. It takes my focus away from the stuff that I actually want to do, actually entertaining the viewers, informing the viewers, you know, getting my content out there and covering the things that I think they actually want to hear about on a daily basis. Nobody wants to hear about me YouTube beefing with somebody else. I'm a 45 year old man and I just don't have time for that. Now, if you like engaging in really stupid rhetorical arguments, YouTube is probably the greatest thing in the history of the world for you because you will find plenty of people to do that with you, especially once you become a bigger channel. People will start getting very mad at you, especially if you're opinionated and you have actually discovered who you're trying to speak to. As you're speaking to those people, other people are going to be very offended. And if you haven't said anything that was so unforgivably true in the history of your YouTube channel that people absolutely had a meltdown, you're probably not making very good YouTube content anyway. People should be having a meltdown every once in a while especially if you're telling the truth. People hate that stuff. The last thing I'll talk about, my final tip for comic book YouTube creators, and like I said, this kind of applies to everybody, is when you're investing in your channel, you really don't need a lot of money to start a YouTube channel. You can record HD videos on your phone, and they have very cheap microphones that work very good that you can clip onto your shirt, plug it into your phone, and you could make really good YouTube videos that way. So it doesn't really take much for the average person to create a YouTube channel. Obviously, it's free. But once you start investing in your channel and some extra technology and, and upping the game as far as the quality of the content that you're going to create, me personally, I would invest in the audio quality first. And this is just for me on my channel. This isn't from a book or anything. What I've noticed is people can put up with like glitchy video. It doesn't bother them that much. But shitty audio, people will absolutely have a meltdown and they'll, they'll unsubscribe and they'll leave your channel. But once your channel is monetized and you're making a little bit of money and it's time to reinvest in there, try to get the audio game up, you know, then you get your camera and you start getting the, some of the bells and whistles. Maybe you start getting some noise canceling blankets and, uh, you know, maybe you soundproof your room or all that kind of stuff. But you can start out with the basics. You can definitely have a very successful YouTube channel without dropping like thousands of dollars on it. I've seen some stuff where YouTube channels are almost the same exact size as mine and they have like a studio set up. And you can tell it's not in their house, like they're renting a studio space, unless you're Joe Rogan or Gary from Nerdrotic or something like that, where you can actually afford that kind of stuff. Like don't go into debt to support your YouTube channel because you think it's going to blow up and you're going to have like 5 million subscribers because none of that is, is promised whatsoever. You know, you'll be lucky to get 25 or 30,000 after four or five years like myself. I feel very blessed that my channel is actually this big because the size of the comic book viewing audience or the potential size of the audience that I have really isn't all that big. You know, there's much bigger opportunities out there if you wanted to do like uh, makeup, video games, movies, what are some of the other stuff? You could do like a, a, a parenting channel. Like obviously the, the potential audiences for those are enormous and the ways to monetize your channels are way bigger than they are for, for comic books. So if you're like looking to become a millionaire or something or become like a full-time YouTuber that doesn't have to work at anything else, uh, that's actually going to be really difficult in comic books. Like, you can be done. There are a few comic book channels that have, you know, well over a million subscribers, but there aren't very many of them for a reason because there just aren't a whole lot of comic book readers out there. That's why you see so many of the comic book YouTubers from like five, six, seven years ago that were really popular. They don't really cover comic books anymore. They more do like pop culture and movies and television and, and Bud Light and stuff like that because the potential audience size for those videos is so much bigger than if you actually go to a niche like comic books or whatever. Me personally, I'm very passionate about comic books and I'm glad to be doing the channel, but even I have to step my foot out every once in a while and try something new. But the last thing I will say about like editing equipment, if you have a Mac, do not get Adobe Premiere Pro as a video editor if you're going to pay for it. 
Get Final Cut Pro. It's much better, and it's a one-time fee. You don't have to pay it annually. If you get Adobe Premiere Pro, it's very expensive. You have to pay for it annually. And uh, it, it's very powerful, more powerful than you'll ever need on YouTube, unless you're making, like, cartoons or maybe a movie or something like that. But just as, like, a talking head or somebody that's presenting information on comic books, you probably won't need anything quite that, uh, that, quite that powerful. There are some free video editors out there that are also very effective. They're not going to be quite as user-friendly as a Final Cut Pro, but you can certainly get by with that and have very good production quality doing that. So invest in your channel. Do not go into debt. Me personally, I would invest in audio quality first and then go into the video stuff. Those are my five tips for comic book YouTube success. These are the things that I've noticed over the five years as a YouTube creator. I wish I had known them five years ago because I think my channel would have gotten a lot bigger, a lot quicker. I've read a lot of this information in books. I've seen a lot of it happen in real life on my channel. And this isn't an end all be all. Like if you follow the tips here, you're like, oh, well, this is what Wes said to do. This isn't a guarantee for success. These are just the things that I have noticed that will be more successful than some of the other things that I'm seeing that are out there. Now, if you got to this point in the video, I'm assuming you, maybe you like me or you want to know some more information about me. Maybe this is your first time. You're like, what's Wes thankful for? In fact, I talked about this about a year and a half ago. Five things I was thankful for in 2021. I had just had a baby. This was a fun video to make. And you can see I'm a much better creator now than I was then. There's also a link in the video description.